I want to do something a little different today. There won't be any science skepticism or contrary viewpoints today. I want to have a mature, rational discussion amongst science communicators. The topic is buoyancy in everyday science and science communication of buoyancy. And just to clarify, all the people in this discussion all agree on exactly what buoyancy is and how it works and how it's caused. We're all in complete agreement. Uh, we just have different points of view of how to present that and how to critique each other. So um, let's clarify what is buoyancy, what are we talking about, and what we all agree with. And I'll, I'll give you this equation um, where I am saying that the weight, the net weight, the force, net force acting on a submerged object can be summarized as the, the standard weight of the object. This is where G is the local acceleration due to gravity and M is the mass of the object. And then there's a buoyancy term. The buoyancy term is the density of the medium uh, multiplied again times the local acceleration due to gravity and the volume displaced, the volume of the medium that has been displaced by the submerged object. So I think we can all agree that's fine. Um, and uh, if we want to get this mass of the submerged object in terms of the same displaced volume, uh, then for a completely submerged object, the, uh, the, the weight term can be described as its density. So rho sub O is the density of the object times the volume of that object. That's the mass of the object. Uh, so these are, these are equivalent. Um, and I like to put it in those terms so that we can clearly see that it is the difference between the two densities that produces ultimately what will be the net force acting on that object. I am responding to this video here, Flat Earth Nonsense 121, MC Tune Could Do Better on Buoyancy by Frank Dubrower. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. I'm gonna say Frank Dubrower, um, but I know that you're Dutch, so you maybe can explain to me how to pronounce your name properly. I'm just going to say Frank. Uh, and uh, uh, Michael Toon there, I'm going to call him uh, Toon. Let's hear, uh, let's hear what Toon has to say about this, and I'm going to interrupt it um, with my comments. Here's what happens. Helium goes up because there's a second force acting on it other than gravity, buoyancy. Okay, we just saw in the equation that I think we all agree on that there are two terms there. And what Toon is saying is that the first term, classically called the weight, he's calling that gravity. We saw that gravity was in both terms, but I think it's clear what he means there is that there's the weight term and the buoyancy term. Uh, now, buoyancy is the result of gravity. He even just said it. The buoyancy term is also the result of gravity. Buoyancy causes um, things that have less downward acceleration than something else in a, in a fluid. Okay, here is a, a legitimate criticism that Frank made of this, uh, uh, of Toon's video. There is not a different acceleration between the medium and the submerged object. That, I, I believe Toon just misspoke there. He's referring to there's a different force. And in a little bit, we'll hear him say it correctly. Uh, the acceleration, and we saw it on the two terms there, the acceleration was the same. The acceleration is the same. It's, the, it's that little g. It's the local acceleration due to gravity. And it's the same on the medium as it is on the submerged object. What Toon meant to say was that the weight, the force, he meant to say the force on the two is different. The force or weight 
uh, acting on the submerged object might be lower than the force acting on the amount of displaced medium of that same volume. That's what he's trying to say there. Um, in short, he should have just replaced the word acceleration with force, and I, I think that was just a, a slip of the tongue there. Let's hear him correct it. To go up, right? So you have air, more dense, more gravity pulling, more force due to gravity pulling on it downward. Then helium, put helium in a balloon, and and that that balloon with the helium in it has less downward force than the air. So there you go. He just corrected it. He didn't mean to say that it had less acceleration. It was clear he meant to say force due to gravity. The air has more force due to gravity pulling it down than the helium has force due to gravity. Uh, and I should think that we can all agree that that's correct. The same volume of air has more weight, more force due to gravity than that same volume of helium. That's what he said. It was very clear and it's correct. So that then it's just a, con a contest between the air and the helium. Which one gets pulled down harder? The air, then the helium goes up. Okay, and then he describes that as a contest between the air and the helium. Uh, if the air is pulled down more, then it will win the contest and, and shove the helium upwards. Um, that's his description, and I assert there's nothing wrong with that. He paints buoyancy as a battle between air that is pulled harder downward by gravity and the helium balloon that has a lesser downward force okay. acting on it. And at this point, uh, Frank describes that is wrong. And, and that's my objection. Um, Frank, you're right that the acceleration is the same. And that was, that was misspeak uh, on Toon's part. And I, I'm certain that Toon knows that. And it was just a slip of the tongue. However, the description that it, it's a contest was, I mean, that's clearly figurative language, right? Uh, <laughs> there's not a literal contest going on. These are not, you know, these are not conscious creatures that can be in a contest. This is air and, and helium. So we should understand that that was figurative language and there's nothing wrong with it. Um, what Toon is describing is that the, any, object submerged in a medium will displace its volume of that medium. So the helium balloon is displacing its volume of air. We can see this uh, very, you can see it very clearly, uh, like in a beaker of water, you know, physics class, uh, chemistry class, whatever, you have a beaker of water and then you submerge something in it, you displace the water level upwards and the amount you displace up is the volume of the submerged object. Simple as that. So if you shove that uh, amount of medium up, you have lifted it and that medium had weight. So the <laughs> amount of weight you have lifted up is, the, is literally the buoyancy term. The amount of weight that you shove upwards by submerging an object in a medium is the density of the medium times the volume of the medium displaced times the local acceleration due to gravity. So that is literally the buoyancy term described in terms of displacement. And there is nothing wrong with that. You, you even in your video in your video, you even called it out as literally wrong, and I don't understand what you're talking about there. You could say these are useful middle school explanations, were it not that the battle explanation doesn't explain why the helium balloon goes up, and the displacing explanation is just wrong. Okay, there we heard that the displacing explanation is just wrong, and, and this is my primary objection. Um, to your, to your video and your whole train of thought here, it, 
it isn't wrong. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, and then you and you had described you described it as a middle school explanation. Um, it is deliberately a simplified explanation, and I think that that is exactly what MC Tune should be doing in this context. But setting that aside, when you say that's just wrong, it isn't wrong, um, and that's where I. This is where I object. Um, if you submerge an object into a medium, you displace the volume uh, of the object in within that medium. That's a fact, and I, I we don't dispute it. No one disputes it. This is just Archimedes' principle. Uh, the weight of the medium that you displace by submerging an object in the medium is literally the buoyant force. And then and you you say that that's wrong, it isn't wrong. That's Archimedes principle and it's not wrong. So I, I strongly object to you to characterizing it as wrong. If you submerge an object into a medium, that medium will be displaced upwards. The the volume of that medium that gets displaced upwards is the volume of the submerged object. Um, and no one's going to disagree with this. This is, is very simple. Uh, the weight of the displaced medium is the buoyant force. It's equal to the buoyant force. And we could leave the discussion right there. You call that a middle school explanation. Uh, and, and maybe there's something to that. I mean, we could leave it there and we probably would leave it there in middle school but it's a perfectly fine explanation that doesn't need anything more than that to explain it. If you push something upwards, then you must be exerting that force and we'll need to balance that out in our equations. Um, and I'll, I'll, maybe I'll throw a link uh, up there to uh, my old video on buoyancy where that's where I leave it. I'm just gonna leave it there and, and I'll go into some demonstrations about why that's all we need. We could go further though. Uh, the object submerged in the medium is experiencing this buoyant force and that's a contact force. The medium is pressing on the object and it is that pressing pressure that is causing the object to experience the buoyancy force. Yes, that's that's absolutely correct. Here's where I was alluding to in my comment, which is the amazing thing is these things have to match. The buoyancy force that I got just from the displacement equation must be correct because I insist that is correct. But at the same time, we know that all the force acting on this thing must come in the form of pressure, pressure that we integrate over the entire surface of the submerged object. And somehow, somehow, if we integrate all the pressures acting on every point of the surface, it has to sum to the exact same value that we already calculated with the simplistic method. Um, and indeed, if you do that, you find that is correct. It is correct because the pressure at the top of the submerged object is lower than the pressure of, at the bottom of the submerged object. You can work that out as a function of the height, uh, the depth, I should say, of the, of the medium, the depth submerged in the medium, the density of the medium. Um, you can tell the pressure at any given point, the final term, of course, being the local acceleration of gravity. And if you work that out, you can find the pressure at any given point on the surface. You can sum that over the entire surface. And what you will end up with is the same calculation we just had, which is rho GV. You're going to get rho GV. That's the answer. They're the same. And they must be the same in order that both be correct. And so that's what I really wanted to express here is that the pressure explanation, which I think is what you're, you're doing right there, and the displacement explanation are 
both 100% correct. And they must be. They must agree. And that's the magic of that tells us that we're on the right track. When you, That's how you know that you really do understand this and you really do have a model that works is when the model is self-consistent in multiple ways of looking at it. One way we could look at it is that this green volume has displaced this much of this medium that it's in. So if you take the weight of this medium that it's in, that's how hard, like those are like balancing on a scale. And when they balance, they weigh the same. So, and that's Archimedes principle, simple as that. Or you could take it in terms of what is the pressure in the medium acting on the surface at any given point and add those all up and that should give us the force. Um, yes, totally, totally correct in, in, all, in all ways. The, and the amazing thing is that those match. If they didn't match, then you would know that one or the other of those is incorrect. My opinion on, on the, the buoyancy conversation in terms of people who are skeptical of gravity, skeptical of buoyancy, and communicating to that sort of audience. Um, I think the pressure explanation is, uh, is a level of depth and complexity that we do not need to go into. Um, the displacement is very simple um, and it's not incorrect. The displacement explanation is, I believe, the, the one to go with. It's, Maybe it is more appropriate for a middle school audience, but that's exactly the target, I think, that we're, that we're talking about. We're not talking about people who have uh, successfully graduated uh, a high school or undergraduate um, physics course. These are people who um, dispute the existence of gravity as we understand it. And so, um, I think making very simple explanations that can be demonstrated in the kitchen very easily, such as Archimedes principle, are maybe a better approach. I don't understand where you're coming from when you say the displacement explanation is wrong. The displacement of uh, the displacement explanation is literally just Archimedes principle, um, and that's not wrong. Uh, so I, I guess I don't understand that one. I'll agree that the that the tune misspoke when he said the acceleration was different on those two. He should have said uh, the force was different on the two, not the acceleration, of course, um, because we'll need the density times the volume times the acceleration, and it is the densities that cause that to be different. Okay, uh, so yeah, let me know your thoughts. I would love to have... Um, an ongoing conversation. We can do a live conversation if you want. Okay. Thanks a lot and bye.